all right so i've taken this circuit and basically band-aid it on some more length of wire because i decided to just really play around with this mostly around four to five megahertz first then i'm gonna go you know gradually up in frequency but at the moment don't have any more suitable small value capacitors for tuning really i've just got the one i'm only going to get this so so well tuned without chopping up this primary about five thousand times basically sort of ballpark tune this this coupling little two-turn primary got this somewhere around four and a half megahertz that's what i was going for might be a little bit higher than that a little current transformer down there for the feedback right so i found it you know it really wasn't that difficult i, I just grabbed a random green uh, filter core from somewhere and i used that just used the windings that were already on it took the two common windings put them in series and then boom right so then i decided to just try this one out out also i wound about something like 30 turns on it seems to work okay also so after using that guy the feedback is much more reliable now and uh i can just sort of set it and leave it so i've got this one in about 40 volts and i'm gonna run that for a little bit get this guy going and again so that the vco right now is uh sitting at about four and a half megahertz and the way i got this tuned at about 40 if i cut that on then it's not a bad little flame so that's uh about 230 watts a little bit under that so again lots of different ways to tweak around that uh tuning But that, that doesn't work too bad. So basically, I had to reset my uh, trimmer resistances there. So those pots and the resistances in line with them were not really set right. So I basically reset them. So now I've got a much smaller window. It's about a little less than a megahertz. You can kind of see, you can just touch the top load, but it just kind of drops that down all the way to about 40 watts. We'll further pull out the uh, arc there. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and you know, again, it's not tuned very perfectly. Uh, I can only do so much right now until I get some uh, more components, but I don't know, I think that's pretty cool. Not too bad. And that's about 200 volts on the drain there, so technically speaking, I can uh, go up to, I don't know, much, much higher than that. But again, um, I'm trying to tune these around the 40 volt region, right? So it just so happens that the way I run these, you know, I've got these two supplies. This one does about 70. This one does about 50. Um, you know, and pushing about, you know, six amps or so, 35, 40. You know, the MOSFET is completely unbothered, right? I mean, I, like you, you can't put, you cannot tell that it was just running, basically. So that's pretty cool. You know, if that's that being the case, I don't really see much point in going too insane trying to get it much better tuned, you know, because the whole point is going to be efficiency and, uh, you know, reducing that heating to not kill the fit. And if I don't really have that problem, then, you know, who gives a crap, right? While this is sort of like a shortcut to a, a class E in like the four megahertz region, I really don't see much point. Uh, getting more complicated than that for just producing a flame about that size right because otherwise the idea is going to be you know you're going to try to create some kind of resonant drive and you're basically going to create a, a more classic class e style circuit it's just a little more complicated you know you've got more switches you got more gdt's you got a lot of stuff you know a lot of stuff going on whereas you don't have any of that with this uh, but i'll say probably one thing i should do with this is add a gdt you know, I'm going to slow my transitions with that, but at least if I do add a GDT, probably get rid of some, you know, maybe some noise issues I'll have on this front end over here, as well as be able to raise the coil voltage much higher. Because right now, as it is, probably wouldn't want to go too much over 60 volts or so, but I probably could. But yeah, I just kind of like how, you know, I can uh, put it at about 40 like that, and boom, just cut it on. Pretty nifty.
So I'll say, um, with this kind of setup, this kind of tuning, you know, this is not putting out a ridiculously hot flame. You know, it's pretty hot. But I'd say it's not on the level of like uh, some of these other higher frequency deals or even some that are pushing quite a bit more power. You can see at this point as I'm loading it, I'm pulling about 100 watts doing that, right? So And let's see, uh, looks like Looks like the way that I've actually got this tuned, I could uh, bring the voltage up quite a bit more. There's a there's a, a point, so that's like 43. There's a point at I don't really want to go too high because uh, I'm afraid of what's what, what might actually be going on in the fit that I'm not really seeing on the scope. But there you go, that's about 260 watts. Yeah, just crank up the voltage just a little bit more and... Uh, Power goes up quite a bit, right? So again, that's probably about the region where I don't want to go too much higher. But that's kind of how I do it, right? I'll run it like that, do a quick finger check. want to make sure to put my finger directly on that MOSFET. Because I'm not going to feel heat on the heat sink. And uh, yeah, it stays pretty cool. And I have got this little 24 volt fan that's running at about 14. So it's pretty quiet, doesn't push a whole lot of air. But I just kind of sit that right there like that. And uh, that sort of sends a tiny little bit of flow over to the gate driver. Which again, at this frequency, it's only about 5 watts gate drive. So I don't really need a fan on it. So a lot of benefits to running this type of setup. Uh, but again, you know, about 260 watts running that right there. Real basic tuning. Again, that thing does not mind it one bit. 